recording. All right. Hi. Yay. Okay. Today is June 12th. We are barely a week. Is that right? We're a week from summit. <gasps> oh my God. Okay. I can't hear you, but I think it's a week from summit. I'm not looking at a calendar. Um, eight, eight days. <laughs> Okay. I had some energize this afternoon, um, late. So now I'm all geared up to talk. So Josh Coates training is amazing. I have never felt so organized. I have never felt so excited to talk to people and I've never felt like it's happening so effortlessly, just like being able to engage with people. Um, so I've been doing two things and I, I talked about this in the, um, page video that I did this morning, um, that I really want to, so I'm talking about two things today. First is I want to kind of expand a little bit on why I'm going to get on you guys about being active either in a challenge group or in a team page, because we can't do this business alone. We can't do our fitness journey alone and we can't run our business alone because, and, and here's why humans are very social. We also really rely, whether or not we like to believe it, we really rely on the fact that when somebody's watching us, we do a better job of something. So for our own fitness journey, which is a ton of what we talk about in our business, like we are our own billboard for our own business. We have to be working on ourselves physically, you know, doing our workouts, eating well, drinking our Shakeology. They're part of the vital behaviors. We also have to be working on ourselves mentally, which is personal development, the third vital behavior or a, another vital behavior. So two out of the four vital behaviors are working on yourself as an individual. So we have to be crushing our own fitness journey. And the best way to do that is to hold ourselves accountable in challenge groups, whether or not you have coaches, I mean, whether or not you have customers or not in that group with you to be hold yourself accountable to your own coach or to coaches in your upline is so powerful because the, you need to be growing on your own journey, because if you're not, then nobody's going to want to follow along and see what you're doing. They're going to be like, well, she looked that same way. She was talking about that same thing six or eight months ago. Last time I checked in, if you're not growing and changing, you're not going to inspire other people. So that's why you need to be in a challenge group. You also need to be active in a team page of some kind. It doesn't matter whose team page it is. You could be in, you know, de-stress for spring. You could be, sorry, not that one. Um, rocking your business, um, in Corinne's group. If you're in my, on my team, Melissa's group, um, Nicole Jones, Tony, if you want to get in on Keith Callahan, you know, anywhere up there, find a team page that inspires you and makes you want to check in. So there's a couple of reasons for this. First is you hear struggles that other coaches are going through and you realize that you're not alone. You make friends, you make, you know, better friends with our team so that when you hit a rough patch, you have people to turn to and ask questions to. Um, you also get firsthand information on, you know, things that are happening in the business, but also things that your coach is doing and the coaches in our upline. The coaches in our upline are hugely successful. Like we are so blessed to be on this team. Um, I mean, Melissa is incredible. Tony is incredible. I have been super, super active in Tony's group for probably three weeks now and been on calls with him. I've done, um, he's doing this 10 X thing, which is, um, basically like he and I have been on a call for my recruits. Like he does that for us. I, he gives me a script. I ask him questions. He answers the questions and then he gets in a three way message with me and my potential, you know, recruits, whether it's what in the world, Amber, is that? <laughs> oh, Lord. I don't know if you guys saw the video on my oh, Facebook page last night. <laughs> it's a Mark Martin cardboard cutout. 
that we have at my house. And my sister decided that it, that would be a good time. That's a great time. Good. Okay. Um, so he, Tony will get in a three way or a group message with me and people that I'm talking to and help me answer questions for them. I mean, basically like we get to, and he will do this for anybody who is active. Yes, Amy. So I just, I had a question for you about that. I don't want to stop your talk, but before you move on from Tony's 10X call, can I ask a question? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I, I love Tony and I've been pretty active in his group and, but I've had reservations about the 10X call. I've been afraid. What if his style isn't my style? What if my people don't like it? What if, what if he's too pushy or swears too much? I don't know. Like, how has it, how's it been going? You know, it's been going great. So like, let me tell you like my experience with Tony. I, Tony was the first, um, like coach call that I saw. Like Christy put me into a couple of Tony's groups, um, like his, you know, weekly sneak peek groups. Um, and I think I was in like three or four and I really connected for whatever reason. I mean, looking back, like, I don't know why I did, but I really connected with him just because, um, you know, he like, he's a different person in the team page compared to how he is in, in his sneak peek kind of calls. Mm. Um, actually I will post in here. I'm going to start making myself some notes. Um, I will post a link to, um, so he actually recorded one last night with another coach. Oh, I wanted to see it catch yeah. that replay. If you have the link with Sarah, yeah, Sarah Nelson, Nelson, that's right. And he said it was awesome. It was I, um, awesome. Cause I always, I, Tony, I, I love Tony. I've, I've worked out at his house before and like, I really like him. I think there was a tiny part of me that was a little bit afraid of letting go of control and, and allowing someone else to speak with my potential challengers or customers. Um, and that was like hard for me. So yeah. that's been going in the, well in the three-way conversations. Very, yeah. okay. very well. Um, like, I, so like, here's, here's the thing too. Like, I know that I really connected with Tony before I even signed up. And if you connect with Tony as a coach, then the people yeah. that you want on your team, they will too. That's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. I was sort of like letting you be a test, letting you do it. And then I was going to ask you, okay, how'd it go? It went, I it's going so well. Cool. So this week he's actually doing another one on Wednesday. I do have someone, um, okay signed up to watch with him and Brett Yes, and, and me obviously and the whole team, but yes. Right. So I will, I'm going to share the link here. You guys can watch it. Um, and then he also in his team page, when he puts the link up for, um, the Wednesday call, I'll, sh I'll tag, I'll tag you guys. Um, okay. Uh, Christina, yes, anyone can hop on to the Wednesday night call tomorrow. That's what Alana was just saying. And you can invite people to it. So you could put something on like your Instagram story or whatever that says like, if I had a sneak peek call tonight or tomorrow night at 9 p.m., would you be interested? Or a sneak peek call working from home and anyone who hits either yes or definitely whatever, you then you can send them the link. Is that correct? Is it a Zoom link, Alana? It is. It's a Zoom link. Um, it's at 9 p.m. tomorrow night. Yes. And it's for anyone. And you can invite in interested people. Exactly. Um, so getting into, um, getting in with like one of our uplines and being on there. I mean, here's the thing, like they have the time and the experience to put together all of this incredible information for us. They're basically giving us a resource to put our people in a group they are going to sell the business for us. We just follow up and reap the benefits. There's no reason we shouldn't be doing this. There's no reason we should be doing like at the level that all of us are. There's no reason. I almost feel like there's no reason we should even be running our own challenge groups at this point. I'm kind of pulling back from my own, from de-stress for spring. Like I'm posting in it, but I am going to be doing Tony's challenge groups from here on out because I've got 10 girls in there and they are on fire and they're all, I got like half of them signed up with a free beach beauty on demand trial just this week. I mean, it's like, 
the energy level in this group fires me up so much that I'm so excited to talk to people about this and to invite people to it because I'm having such a good time and I'm being more committed to my journey. I'm and posting in there every day. Being, it ends up being such an active group too because there's so many people. So it's not like three people posting. Yeah. Tons of people posting. There's tons of people. And like they're like my people are getting all these comments from other people on the team being like, yeah, awesome, good job, way to go. And they feel supported and they're loving it. And you know, of course there's like the weekly raffle and all this sort of stuff. So please, if you want to move your business forward, get involved in a team. It doesn't have to be Tony. That just happens to be who I'm um having good success with right now. But you know, if, if Melissa's team is speaking to you, if Corinne's team is speaking to you, if Nicole Jones team is speaking to you, please engage in a team that fires you up and who you feel comfortable bringing your people into. Um, you know, if there's a coach that you connect with, your people are going to connect with that upline as well, because they are your tribe. I mean, that's, that's how it works. I just assume that everybody that I bring in is going to connect with Tony, <laughs> whether or not they do is, you know, that's fine. But like, I really do right now. So I'm using all the resources that I can get. And I feel like it's really helping me um, to, <laughs> this is kind of funny. I sent Christy a message um, a couple of weeks ago because um, like, when I first signed up, like I'd sent Tony a friend request, but like he's got like 50 bazillion friends and he's probably maxed out at the 5,000 level. And so he never accepted my friend request. So just like two weeks ago, he sent me a friend request and I was like, <laughs> so anyway, and he's been like super helpful. Like I talked to him probably five, five times a week, just about different things. And like, he's been really, really, really helpful. Like he is really helpful and he will get in a three-way message with anybody with you as long as he knows who you are and he knows that you're putting in the effort. Um, you know, that that's what's important. He really wants to help his downline just like any coach does, but he, he's got, I don't know how he does it. He's got the time and energy to devote to people who are runners and who want to make this business work. So questions before I move on to the conversations and the invitation stuff that I'm learning from Josh Coates. Yes, Christina. Oh, sorry. There you go. So, okay. It's probably like partially my fault, but like when for the challenge groups, like being active in it, like how often per se, like do you log like for yourself? Cause like I'll, I realize that I'll be like, oh, well, I'll do it tonight. And then it's like, I'll forget. So like, do you, like, do you know what I mean? Like how, but because then too, like I noticed too, majority of my people don't do it either, but I don't know if it's because I'm not personally doing it all the time or, or even like when I'll try and I'll like tag them, it's like little crickets. So they're going to feed off of your energy and they're going to feed off of the energy of the group. So when you are, when you're active, so it may just be that you're in a group that doesn't inspire you and that's why you're not posting and they are kind of, you know, seeing that. And so they're like, well, I don't see her posting. So I guess it's not going to be a priority in this group. Um, I will say that the group that I'm in right now, I post every single morning and my goal is to post before my challengers so that they get in there and they see, oh, hey, she's posted. I should probably post too. Um, and so I post every day. Sometimes I post more than once a day. Sometimes I'll break my posts up and be like, I'll do my fitness post and then I'll do my nutrition post. So like for Tony's group right now, um, we were divided up onto teams. There's team, there's each, each team has a team color. So like myself and two other coaches are the, um, the, the, whatever you call them, leaders of our team. Um, and so we, we run team red. And everybody gets points for a nutrition post and a fitness post every day. You can have 12 points a week. And then all the challengers at the end of the week who have um, hit 12 points, um, they get entered into a raffle to win a t-shirt from Tony. I'm doing my own raffle for my challengers. Um, anybody who gets 10 points or above in the week, um, I'm doing a separate drawing just within our little team chat um, that I've set up for my challengers. Um, just to kind of, you know, make sure that I'm connecting even more with my people. But I post every day, first thing in the morning, 
before anybody else, sometimes twice a day, because I want them to see that I'm excited. I want them to see that it's a priority for me because I know that they feed off of that energy and I know that they see, you know, somebody that they know is doing it. And then they're like, ah, I got to do it too, because that's what I'm like. That That's what I was like when I was first in the challenge group with Christy, who's my coach. Um, I would see her post and I'd be like, ah, she's going to be looking for my post. So then I'd have to go and post and it kept me accountable. And I had really good success at the, you know, when I needed it right at the beginning of my journey, when Garrett was like six weeks old. So <laughs> um, do, you know, post frequently be excited, do, you know, inspiring posts, make funny posts. Um, you know, think about what drew you into the business and what your coach was like and what you responded to. So that's my, that's my advice for that. Um, any, anything else, Christine? Oh, I'm just reading your, can we hop on? To, oh, okay. That was from earlier. Okay. Um, any other questions before I move on? Okay. So let's talk about invitations. Um, so I did a little video about this, uh, I think yesterday or the day before in, um, in our little team page. And I've totally streamlined my, um, my process that goes from making friends, you know, growing my network to connecting with them, to having a conversation with them, to inviting them. And I've been over the past two weeks, I've been doing this kind of shortened, condensed version within either, I mean, sometimes it's within a day and sometimes within, you know, a couple of days and I've had really good success with it. So I'm going to, again, just kind of recap that. And then I'm going to go through some of the stuff that um, I got, I've been getting out of the group. Um, and also what I'm going to do is I'm going to post some of the scripts that I've been getting from this group into um, the message thread, or actually maybe I'm going to put them in a document in the team page. Um, okay. Okay. So here's what I've been doing. However it is that you make friends, go and make friends, whether you're requesting friends of friends, whether you're engaging in your groups. And then, so like, again, an easy way that I do this is I'll make a post usually like an engagement style post where I ask a question related to whatever group I'm in. So whether it's a mom's group or a dog group, those are my two right now. Um, I'm having a lot of success with this Australian cattle dog group that I'm in. Like most of my friends are coming from there right now. <laughs> so I'll go and make a post. I'll ask a question. Every single person that responds, I will respond to them and then I will immediately request them as a friend because they will see that I responded to them. So they remember who I am and then they're like, Oh yeah, she's in the Australian catalog group and she's sending me a friend request and I commented on her post. So obviously I think she's cool. And so nine times out of 10, they're going to accept my friend request because they remember who I am. Um, and actually just today I had somebody message me. She's like, do I know you? She's like, Oh yeah, never mind the Australian cattle dog group. Um, so go make your friends. Then at the end of the day, every day, I, um, I go to my friends list and there's, there's an option for recently added. So for that day, all the people that you added, you know, within the last maybe two or three weeks are in there, depending on how many there is. The last couple of, you know, whether hours or days, I go in and anybody who's new that I haven't connected with, I'll go to their page and I'll comment. That makes sure that they will immediately start seeing my posts because that's the way the algorithm on Facebook is working, that when you comment on somebody else's post, they start to see your comments, or they start to see your posts in pop up in their newsfeed. Then, like, same time, I will send them a message after I've commented on whatever their post is, and I'll say, hey, thanks for accepting my friend request, I saw your post about blah, 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 and I'll start, you know, getting to know them. So, um, then we kind of get into Yes, Christina, I'm going to unmute you. What if, like, when you go to their page, the last thing they posted was, like, one of those, like, stupid mean things or, like, it was, like, an old post from, like, a while ago? I will – I scroll back through until I find something interesting. Like, I think it's pretty common that when you make new – stalk her, but at the same time, like, I do want to do it. You know what I mean? What do you mean? Sorry, I missed that. Like, I don't want to be like a stalker like that. I'm scrolling back from like, you know, if they don't post like as much or anything. But then again, at the same time, it's like, who cares, right? 
Right. It, who, who does care? Like, and that's the thing I will scroll back. And if there's something, I mean, I won't go back like a year, yeah. but if somebody posts pretty frequently, there's hopefully something. And the other thing is if there is truly nothing that you connect with, like don't bother because they're not your people. True. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Can I interrupt for half a second too? Yeah. Um, if you, it, it's kind of a double-edged sword. If they don't post a whole heck of a lot, they're, you're gambling with the, the chance that, they, um, that they're not somebody that's really active in their social media, so they're not going to see your stuff anyway. But there's also silent Facebook watchers. Yeah. So One of those. what I usually do is if they um, haven't posted anything recently, um, I sometimes they don't reach out to them right away, and I see if they respond to any of my stuff. So if they're liking any, like if they, it, my personal rule is if they haven't posted anything in two months, I don't reach out. I don't comment on any other stuff. Cause I personally kind of feel like that looks like I'm <laughs> stalking their Facebook page. Um, but if they like, even if it's just a simple, like any of my posts, then I'll, then I'll go out and I'll, I'll, I'll interact on something, even if it's a bit older, because then I know that they're one of those people that just kind of opens their Facebook and scrolls, who doesn't ever really post anything. Um, but I've had friends that they add it, they accept a friend request the one time in three months that they got on their Facebook and I've reached out to them. And then six months later, they're like, Oh, Hey, I never opened this thing. How you doing? And then I'm like, well, that was just a big waste of my time. So that's how I, I do it. I know other people do it a little bit differently. And I don't think it's going to hurt anything to comment, even if you do something older than that, comment just a simple little thing and then just see if there's any kind of, you know, interaction with it. I just, maybe not stuff that's like three years old. <laughs> don't go back to anything like crazy, crazy, crazy old or things that people wouldn't comment on anyway. Like don't go to something that's six months old. It's not something that you would have normally commented on because then it's like reaching. Yeah. And I would say like when, like if somebody sends me a friend request, the first thing, I'm, and I don't know who they are, the first thing I'm going to do is go to their page anyway. So I think that's pretty normal. I think that it would be normal, like for you to go and just have a look at their page and see who they are. Like no harm, no foul. Okay. Um, so when, so you've gone and you've sent your friend requests and you've, you know, commented on their page and now you're in a private message with them. So, um, Here's the thing about conversations and inviting people. This is the only thing in our business that's going to make us money. Okay. We can post all day long. We can have the best posts in the whole world, but if we don't reach out and in specifically interact with people and invite them, we are not going to make it in this business. We are not going to be successful. We have to reach out. We have to invite. So, this is the easiest way that I've found to do this. And it, I'm, I swear to you, it is so painless. Okay. Um, we have to get to know them first. Um, so you've probably all heard the acronym FORM. And for a long time, I forgot what it meant. Like first, I didn't know what it meant. Then I forgot what it meant because I heard it once. Here's what it means. It, so it, there's four letters. There's F-O-R-M. F means family. You ask about their family. You ask about their kids. You, these are just ways to get to know them. You want people to know you, to like you, and to trust you because when they do that, they're going to want to listen to you and they're going to want to buy from you, basically. Um, so you get to know, you know who they are and what their family's like. You ask about their occupation. You figure out what they like to do for recreation or their hobbies. So that's F-O-R. And then you send them the message. That's the M. So... Josh says, if you just get the F-O-R without the M, Amy, is your son still up? Okay. <laughs> if, you, if you get to the, if you do the F-O-R and you don't get to the M, it's just foreplay. You're not doing anything. So do not shy away from sending them a message because that's the whole point of what we're here to do, was to send them an invitation to join something. If it's free, it doesn't matter. If it's paid, it doesn't matter. You just want to let them know that what you have is something incredible that they need in their lives and you want to help them. That's the whole point of sending an invitation. Okay, so it's the most important part. Um, 
So here's the thing about messages. Like we can't overthink them. And that's why I'm going to share all of these um, scripts that you guys can use and adapt because when you think too much about inviting people, it gets in your way. Like Josh said, use as little brain power as humanly possible when you're sending out invitations, like literally copy and paste as much as you can. If you find something that works for you, save it, copy it, paste it, you know, rework something maybe that I've shared or that you've gotten from another coach or something that you've developed yourself, copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. And you can send out 20 invitations in 10 minutes. I mean, it's that easy. Um, so here's a couple of conversations that you can start that will lead to an invitation. Um, also, here's the thing, like really, really don't overthink it. Like you could send them an invitation on like the fourth, fourth method, fourth message. <laughs> and if, you know, if you're going on longer than that and you've been having a conversation with them about their dog for the last 10 days, get to the point. Like, yes, we want to get to know people, but there's a point where it's not a good use of our time. If we are in this business to run a business and to make money so that we can live the life that we want to live, be home with our kids or, you know, give to charities or travel internationally or whatever our dreams happen to be, renovate our house, you know, help out our family, whatever it happens to be, spending 10 days talking to somebody about their dog is the least effective use of your time. So remember that. Um, okay. So conversations. Um, okay. So this is why you need to be making good posts. You want to be getting the likes and the comments from people. So then, you know, you go back to your posts. This is like, this is my favorite one. I use this one all the time. You go back to your posts and you see who liked your posts. You see who commented on your posts and you send them a message and you say, Hey, thank you so, so, so much. I saw that you, you know, liked my post post or you commented on it or whatever. Um, and it's not weird because you're mentioning something that they already liked in your post. And so it's an easy invitation. You'd be like, Hey, did you want some information? Or, Hey, I saw you commented on this post about this group I'm doing. I'd love to get you added. Are you interested? Um, for a coaching post. Um, thank you so much for liking my post. Um, I, it really means a lot to me that some, you know, that you're supporting my journey. Have you ever thought about doing what I do? Um, so that's a good one for, um, coaching posts, birthdays, always, always, always every single birthday. That's like an easy, easy, easy one to connect with people. Um, just to start up conversation, say, Hey, happy birthday. It's been a, you know, a million years since we talked or Hey, happy birthday. Are you doing anything fun today? Oh, geez, this thing's giving me 10 minutes. Okay. Um, so, um, you know, birthdays or somebody, you know, Hey, we haven't talked in forever. Just wanted to catch up, start a conversation that way. The great thing that I, this is also a little bit of a no brainer, but I realize it works perfectly. Ask people about whatever it is you want them to ask you about. So you say, Hey, what do you do? If it's a new person and they're going to be like, well, I do this. What do you do? And you'd be like, Oh, well, let me tell you, I'm a health and fitness coach or whatever my business is. I run a side business from home. Um, and I love it. Would you be interested in hearing about it? Don't be, don't feel weird about it. Here's the thing. If it's right for somebody, you can't say something that's going to make it wrong. But if it's not right for something for somebody, no matter what you say is going to make it right. Um, so don't, don't overthink it. Um, so the invitations. Um, okay. So here's a good one that I've been using a lot. Uh, and again, I'll post these. Um, so, Hey, I was thinking about you and okay. This would only be weird if you hadn't talked to them in a long time, but I've been using this for people that I literally messaged yesterday or the day before, or, you know, you could change it around a little bit and be like, Hey, you know, we were just having this conversation about such and such. And it made me think, you know, maybe you'd love to be in this thing that I'm doing basically. So here's, here's the script, like make it work for you. So it says, Hey, I was thinking about you. I have a, you know, whatever, a challenge group, a sneak peek group that I'm doing. Um, would you be interested in trying? If not, no worries. I just had you on my mind since we were chatting recently. That is probably the most important part of the entire 
message because if you give somebody a way out, they're not going to go looking for one. Um, Zig Ziglar, which if you have read anything by him, he's amazing. Um, he said, give people a way out. If we give people a back door, they won't look for one. That gives people an easy way to say, hey, no thanks, that's all right. But if you come at somebody and you'd be like, do you want to join me? They're going to be like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to know. Like, and then they're going to be like, how do I get out of here? <laughs> so make sure that you give people an option to decline politely if they really don't want to. But, and if they do, if they say no, who cares? Move on. They're not the right person for you right now. And you're, and, and truthfully, you, maybe you're not the right person for them right now. Um, okay. So then the other thing that you can ask people is, hey, I'm looking for people who might be interested in the business I'm doing. I was wondering if you know of anyone that might be interested. This is an interesting one because you don't, you're not asking them directly. And if somebody, you know, thinks that what you're doing is pretty cool, but they maybe aren't interested, they probably will, um, you know, put you in touch with somebody who they think might be interested. This is again, like, even if it's not right for them, if you're doing your job and you're connecting with them, they're going to know you and they're going to like you and they're going to trust you. So they'll be happy to recommend you. Um, another one is flattery. This is really, really, really important. Don't blow smoke up people's ass, but do give them genuine compliments. Um, so a really good one is, hey, I was thinking about you today and how positive and motivated you always are. I have no idea if you'd be interested, but, and then, you know, you know, that you could say you're smart and creative or whatever it is that you genuinely think of this person. You know, if they're always, you know, posting really inspirational quotes on Facebook, like those people are great. Um, you know, give, compliment them, make them feel like you recognize what they're doing is an amazing thing. Because if somebody comes up to me and says, Hey, I think you're awesome because I'm gonna be like, Oh, that's nice. Thank you. And then I automatically feel more open to what they're saying. Um, the other cool thing that I thought, I don't know, like I, I haven't really used this before until like this week when I learned about it. Um, but it's a brilliant idea. When somebody signs up for a product, offer them the business opportunity. There's no reason not to, basically. Um, this is kind of a crazy statistic. So a customer has a two to three month lifespan and somebody who is a coach or like a rep of a, of a company has a three to six month lifespan. Average. Um, and so you're giving them the opportunity first to, you know, they may not even know about it. They may not even know it's an option. If you just say, Hey, like there's a discount coach, no obligation to coach, like, and kind of downplay it, that's fine. And you can do that. But if you want to grow your business as a business and get other coaches signed on, offer them the opportunity to coach, give them the opportunity to help people give them the opportunity to earn their shakes back. Um, and people who are invested, even if they're only invested a little bit, they are going to stay with you longer. They're going to have a longer opportunity to fall in love with the products themselves. Um, yes, Amy, I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead. Something I heard recently was that a really good time to um, get referrals from people similar to what you said, you know, if you're, when you said, um, you know, anyone who might be interested is, I heard recently, it might have been from Josh Coates, I don't remember. But anyway, it said, once you get someone to sign up, there's this like dopamine rush that they get, like if they buy a challenge pack or whatever, they're super excited, literally in that same conversation, when they're like, yep, just place my order, you, you're, you it's a great time to say something like, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Can you think of anyone else who would be interested in doing this journey with us? And because of that, like adrenaline rush that they're experiencing and whatever, they are more often um, willing to like give a name of a friend or um, whatever. So I just heard that. I thought that was really interesting. So um, 
I haven't tried it yet because I haven't had a challenge pack sign up since I heard it, but it seems like it makes sense. That's brilliant. Actually, that makes perfect sense because when you do make that purchase, you're like, you feel like you can do anything. Mm -hmm. You're like, I could totally do this. I've bought this challenge pack because I'm going to change my life or, you know, whatever happens to be. And it's yes. a good opportunity to feel like you're doing something together then. There's anyone who else would want to join us. You know? uh, yes, and then absolutely. All of a sudden you're doing it together and they're part of your team and they're in and they're like, oh my gosh. So, yeah. Yeah. And actually that's a great lead in for like getting them signed up as a coach and mm -hmm. having them sign people on under them. Yes. And then like everybody can just repeat, repeat, repeat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Love it. Guys, I kind of experienced this last night on a totally unrelated topic, but um, I got a pair of flip-flops that are made for, um, for plantar fasciitis. And, and it's like mind boggling that you just said that because I um, they're expensive shoes and I would have never bought them for myself because they're just too expensive. And my mother-in-law ordered them. I was so excited about these stupid flip-flops that I ended up contacting like six different friends that all have issues with plantar fasciitis <laughs> and was like, Oh my God, these freaking flip-flops are going to change my life. And, um, now I realize why, <laughs> cause you know, that, that works. So that's, it's, that's a good route to go because, um, people do, they get excited, especially when it comes to things like this, because they're, the possibilities are endless with your health. I'm going to stop you because we have less than a minute. Oh, sorry. Didn't know. <laughs> that's okay. I just want to wrap up super, super quick. Cause I'm pretty sure we've <laughs> Um, the bottom line is use as little power as possible when brain, when, when use as little brain power as possible when inviting and form people and send them an invitation, just let it naturally happen. So that's, that's all I want to say. Um, any questions? And I'm going to post all the, all of the invite scripts in the page, but any questions before we, we hop off less than a minute. Okay. Thanks you guys. Um, I really want all of you to be, you know, get engaged in a challenge group, get engaged in a, a team page, go do your thing, go rock this. We can do this summit next week. I'm so excited. Okay. Sounds good. All right, everybody have a wonderful, wonderful night. Bye.